Welcome to the NBA Triple Double Show powered by Sports Memo. I'm your host, Ronald Kabang from Wager Talk at UCapper Sports on Twitter. I'll be joined by Moneyline Matt from Sports Memo, Tony Finn from Wager Talk. Uh, we'll be talking about game four here of the NBA Finals between the Heat and the Nuggets. Before we get into that game, though, I do want to talk about what we got going on over at Sports Memo and Wager Talk. Uh, we got the free live odds page going on over there uh, every day. The deals pages has promos available from every single capper uh, that, that has has one available. Uh, there's also uh, coupons and, and uh, promo codes available there for, for uh, season, uh, seasonal or monthly packages. Uh, cappers provide free picks and analysis on a daily basis along with their daily packages as well. So make sure you head over to sportsmemo.com to catch Matt. You can find myself uh, and Tony Finn over at Wager Talk. Also, before you go after the show here, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button on YouTube. Uh, with that said, let's get Matt and Tony up here with me. Oh, they are here. There you go. That's quick. Oh, yeah. um, guys, uh, we always we always open the show being transparent. And uh, Game three was a good one for me, guys. I went 4-0 on game three. Um, you know, I had a couple big plays and then a couple small ones I hit. Uh, I had the full game under, the Heat team total under, Denver first half, and then the one that I gave out on uh, Wednesday's show was Jamal Murray over 12 and a half rebounds and assists, um, which was, uh, you know, obviously like a, one of the smaller bets usually. I, but typically when I put out a best bet on a show, it, it's usually a premium play here. So glad we hit that one on the show for those who watched it. Uh, Matt, let's go to you here. How how'd everything go for you? Yeah, I'll be honest. You know, we broke it down pretty well on the show, and I haven't been uh... – Hitting as many as typical, so I kind of only went with one play. Wish I went with more because we talked about taking the Denver Nuggets, which that hit. We talked about taking the under, which that hit. We talked about taking the team total under, which that hit. And all I took was Jimmy Butler. And Jimmy Butler played well. He just didn't get many rebounds. He just didn't get many assists. And I decided to go points, rebounds, and assists. But we got another day of basketball. It is game four. Looking to bounce back. I believe I'm two and four on the week. So definitely want to bounce back today. So as always, ready to break it down with you, Ron, and ready to break it down with Tony. Yeah, Tony. Um, how, how's everything going for you? Uh, you know, obviously, we, it's game three here. Uh, game three, how did game three go for you uh, as we head into game four? Well, it's been a... Uh... As, as I want to say, and much like uh, on both of you guys, uh, it, it was good. Game three was good. Unfortunately, um, for Matt, he just didn't get the you know the right didn't push the right button, which we've all done several times in our careers. So I had a, I went two and one. The one I lost was I had a double double on uh, on the Missouri ex Missouri. Well, what he played fifty? I think he played a total of fifty three minutes for Missouri Tigers uh, total. Um, you know, and he's, there's been big questions about him, but long story short, um, Porter Jr. didn't get his double double. In fact, again, he, he was shorted on minutes or at least on the bench more than he's used typically is. And, and there was a lot of questions about that. They got answered at least semi or pseudo answered by coach Malone yesterday, but I did hit the under, I had a big ticket five percenter on the under in that game. Uh, and additionally, I hit a, hit a sim game parlay and that was a three team. It was a, I, it was an, Basically, with the DraftKings, so everyone knows. Uh, so I was able to do some alternative uh, lines, or I played an alternative total under two twenty and a half. I played the Joker over his uh, uh, points, assists, and rebounds, and I had uh, uh, what else? I, and I had Denver on the money line. So nice little three pick at DraftKings, a three pick same game parlay that pays three to one on that. So I took that. So I hit those two. A nice day. I'm ready for game four. I like it. I like it. All right. Well, let's yeah. go. Let's go. Uh, before we go into game four, just real quick recap of game three. I mean, obviously the Nuggets took care of business in Miami. I mean, 109 94 to go up 2 1 on the series here. One thing we talked about on Wednesday, Matt, was, you know, sort of like a letdown offensively from the Heat side. And that definitely did happen. They shot 37 from 37% from the field. Uh, they got out rebounded 58 to 33. They dominate. They got dominated in the paint, too giving up 60 points in the paint to the Nuggets. Another thing that I did notice, guys, the Heat won the turnover battle 13-4, to and they still lost by 15 points. Typically, if you see at the end of the game, right, you see the end of the game, you see the box score, you see 13 turnovers and four on the other side, you would expect at least – I would expect the number the, the team with the four turnovers to be the, the team up at the end of the game, but that definitely wasn't the case. And Denver, obviously, you guys mentioned it, you know, led by Murray and Jokic, both had triple doubles here. Uh, Christian Brown had a heck of a game, both offensively and defensively, and which kind of led to what you were talking about, Tony. You know, MPJ playing 21 minutes only. Um, that was 
I believe his lowest amount of minutes played in a in a game this postseason. Um, you know, he he struggled both offensively and defensively. So uh, having someone athletic like Christian Brown come in um, and do what he did and be successful, he, they rolled the hot hand basically. Um, so we'll see what happens here in Game Four on the Heat side. It was Butler and Bam, and then nobody else. Uh, we talked about how uh, on Wednesday how there were a lot of role players that stepped up every single game, different role players stepping up every single game for the Heat, and that made a difference for them to get to this point. But in game three, there really was no no role player to step up for them at this time. Um, in, in game two, right, the Heat played like they were okay with Jokic scoring as long as they could stop everybody else. In game three here, it seemed like Mike Malone did it the other way around. He came back and said, <clears throat> let's allow Butler and Adebayo dominate the usage, keep everybody else from contributing, and that definitely worked. So we'll see what happens here in game four. Um, from a betting perspective or from any type of analysis, Matt, let's go to you here. What, what are your thoughts here for game four? Uh, you know, game four, I'm definitely – a lot of player props in this one. I'm expecting some players to bounce back. You know, one guy that I'm definitely looking at here is actually Gabe Vincent. Uh, I think Gabe Vincent never could really get in a rhythm in the first half. He's not a guy that tends to get in foul troubles, got two early fouls, got checked out early, came right back in, got another – got his third foul, so checked out. So I think a lot of that has to do with it. Gabe Vincent is a big momentum guy for the Miami Heat, and he's been a huge threat from beyond the arc. You know, he's shooting 41% uh, in the postseason at this point in time, so I think he's someone who I expect to step up, and we really haven't seen much from Max Struess just yet, you know. Uh, I think his point prop is going to continue to go down a little bit. It might be around 85 for today's game. And if it is that line, you know, I gave out a free play of Max Drews, I believe in game one, and the line was at eight and a half. Uh, that ended up hitting. And actually, my my free plays are going a lot better than my real plays right now. So just be like that. But, uh, you know, I expect Jimmy Butler again. I think he's going to do a little better in terms of the assist and rebound category. He didn't really facilitate all that much. He didn't really attack the glass. And a lot of that had to do with Bam out of bio gobbling up almost every single rebound. You know, Bam played a great basketball game, but he's typically not someone I expect to get that volume of rebounds each and every game. And I do think it'll be a Jimmy Butler-centered game. Um, again, whether that be the points, rebounds, and assists, uh, I think that's probably pretty probable here. And, you know, they're going to have to uh, come out early and aggressive. You know, I like maybe a Miami first quarter look or something along those lines. And then for the Denver Nuggets, you know, I do think that Nikola Jokic is going to be the center, obviously. You know, I think that um, Spolstra is going to start throwing some different looks at Nikola Jokic. He's really been unanswered throughout this series and kind of doing everything he wants. He's been incredibly efficient. And, you know, I understand how hard he is to stop. But, you know, Bam Adebayo, once again, he's a 6'9 defender to Jokic's 7 foot. He's giving up a lot of weight. It's, it's a very tough matchup for him. So they do need to start throwing some different looks at him if – the, will they work? I'm, I'm not too sure. But I think the Heat need to start throwing some different things. And then in addition to that, I really think with Jamal Murray, you're going to start seeing a lot of hedging, some very, very hard hedging at the three-point line where they're coming out, meeting him, not allowing him to get in a rhythm. So in terms of your look uh, on the last episode, Ron, in terms of the points and assists, I'd actually like that again. I think there's going to be a lot of hedging with Murray. I think they're going to have to force that ball out of his hands. And with Michael Porter Jr., you know, I, I give um, Malone a lot of credit here because, you know, this is Michael Porter Jr.'s M.O., it's either he's playing really good or it is just absolutely dreadful. And in the NBA Finals, you got to yank him quick because he's just one of those guys where he, when he gets in that zone, when he's playing bad, he doesn't move. He just sits there in the corner. There's no cutting. There's no rhythm. There's no trying to get other people involved. He just doesn't move. So I do applaud Malone, uh, head coach Malone, in uh, yanking him, give Christian Braun some extra minutes. And, you know, because one thing with Christian Braun as well, very good defender. Very good defender along with that outside shot. That's a little spotty, but when he's making it, he's pretty good. He can knock that down, and that's huge for someone like Nikola Jokic when Michael Porter Jr. is missing shots like that. But for me, in this spot, I'm honestly going right back mm -hmm. to the Nuggets. I think the Nuggets are too good. I think there are still so many mismatches throughout this court. Uh, and if it wasn't for Game 2 and the Heat winning in Denver – you know, I think this would be a larger spread to the Denver Nuggets. Honestly, it reminds me of Allen Iverson against the Lakers. You know, he had that big game in game one, and the Lakers came and won the next four. 
you know so this is kind of what i expect from this denver nuggets team i think they get it here um and then go back home and end this series honestly i think it's over in five i wish there was more basketball but me personally i think it's over in five yeah, that's a that's an interesting take there. I mean, like obviously the we see the zigzag, right, Matt? We're seeing the zigzag here, the win loss, win loss. But like you said, I think Denver kind of has their number. If you look, we talked about this before the series too, Matt. Um, since twenty eighteen, prior to this series, I think it was nine and one or something, nine and one in the last matchup, uh, last ten matchups between the uh, Nuggets and the Heat that the, the Nuggets have won. Um, you know, after you know, obviously now it's uh, what eleven and two. Uh, including the playoffs here in the finals, but they they just seems like it just seems like they've had the number of the Miami Heat there. Um, Tony, let's go to you here. I know you you hit the under um, in, in game three. I also hit the under two. I mean, sorry, the over. Um, was it sorry <laughs> the, the under? My bad. The under, um, the under. And um, I so I know you look at the total a little bit more than than Matt does. I want to get your take on this because I have a look on the total as well. And I want to see if you agree on it. But for the most part, I, I'm expecting, you know, after a loss in the playoffs with a spo led team, that the Heat come back with a strong defensive effort. And that's telling me that this should be an under type game. Uh, are you looking towards that direction from a total perspective? Yeah, I, I absolutely am. Um, for a couple reasons. And I, and without, you know, reading off the short story on this game and how I see it playing out, uh, and, and I've had lots of, uh, of uh, peers and coworkers and pundits to disagree with me, but what you saw in Game Four is uh, is I don't think it's a, a microcosm of what's going to happen for the rest of the way because I don't think I agree with Matt. I don't think there's much time left in this series, and I don't give Miami. Uh, uh, our job is to create situations or at least outline situations with the highest probability, and I don't see a high probability of Miami, uh, you know, winning this series point blank. Um, what you mm-hmm. saw in game, what you saw in game four, I think is what you're going to get. And for Miami fans, that's discouraging. I'm, I'm quite certain, or they're telling them, you know, could not be more wrong, right? Uh, the Miami will bounce back. I, I, here's the deal. Um, uh, ba- uh, the Joker and what he was able to do in game four, there was a few changes. They made a few changes on, um, as far as his facilitation goes, uh, because of what Miami had, all, uh, had, basically uh, adjusted to right and it, they just they don't have an answer they have zero first off the height and the size disparity between these two teams limits miami they they don't want to go half court somehow they have to disrupt denver's half court offense and denver's pretty darn efficient in their half court offense especially with a team that's undersized or compared to them and wants and should be wanting to play small guys they should be wanting to play small in this game um my denver's not crashing the board they're not crashing the boards guys they don't want they don't want possessions to start in transition yet they out rebounded miami by 25 or whatever it was and and, and you guys both spoke uh, about well at least at least you did uh, um and that was you see a team with 13 turnovers you see a team with four what happened there is if you look at what they did with the turnovers and what Miami did or what Denver did with the turnovers, the four turnovers, Miami, uh, Denver scored eight points. The 13 turnovers, Miami only scored, I think it was nine points. So uh, the, the, the efficiency yeah. off turnovers the efficiency is, is big. And uh, for the most part, guys, here it is. Denver wants to, or at least Miami wants to trade three points for two points. That They have to hit their three-pointers. Cannot win unless they shoot for a high percentage beyond the arc. And their goal is, okay, we're going to protect the three-point line. We're going to make Denver go inside. And it doesn't, it doesn't, it's not going to work. You saw that last game. Look what they outscored them in the paint. Denver doesn't even try to really go to the paint. They facilitate again. They facilitate for at, at the top of the key or right there in the circle of the free throw line, the cherry stripe, and game, set, match. Um, who do you, what are you going to do? What what system? What, what are you going to do? Here it is. I see an under here, unless Miami shoots for a very high percentage from the three-point line. If they shoot from mm-hmm. a high percentage from the three-point line, then, I, then this game can go over 210, 212. We, we all three know that, right? Um, the highest probability is that what I saw is what we're going to get. And what I saw was a, a Miami team that's fatigued to some degree. I mean, you think about the games yeah. they've played at the, at the emotional, not only at the physical level, but at the emotional level that Denver has not played. And... 
um, you know, they sweep, they sweep LA, they go they, what, they have five Miami. They, they pretty much had their way with Phoenix. That isn't the case with really wasn't been the case with Miami. They beat a one seed, they beat a two seed. And then they beat the team that all three of us really thought was the best team in the East. And here they are in the championship and they're pretty tired. They're fatigued under, under, under. We get beat if Miami shoots for a high percentage for the three point line. Yeah. I mean, that that's a, that's really good thing to say there. I mean, I think a lot of people think about fatigue and they think, you know, just based off of, you know, how many games they play, the minutes they played, but you're, you're mentioning the emotional fatigue of how they've been going through the playoffs, right? They, they've been battling as underdogs since the beginning of the playoffs here and they're in the finals. Nobody expected them to be here. Obviously they did. Uh, but at this point, you know, it has it gotten to the point where it's just too much now. And it seems like it has, it, it has gotten to that point. Like they've, they've already peaked and now they're coming back down um, a little bit. That's what it, it seems like. And like you said, um, you know, if they're not going to hit their three point shots like they did in game two, then, you know, that it's going to be a problem here. But we do know one thing though. Um, like I was talking about right before you, you started talking, like we expect Spo and this heat team to come out defensively. You heard him after the, I don't know if you guys listened uh, to the post game presser, but coach Bo, he was really pissed off about the 60 points that he gave up. They gave up in the paint. So that's going to be a key component for them here in this game four for, uh, to, to stop them, right? It's not like the Nuggets have been shooting lights out from three, right? MPJ has been struggling. Um, so it's maybe to the point where they're going to allow uh, the Nuggets to try to, um, you know, basically force them and say, we'll let you shoot the three. If you're not going to make it, or at least you're not going to get into the paint. Um, so I think, you know, the lo- the further we go into the playoffs, right, every possession counts a little bit more. Defense has started to, to become more important for every single possession. And that's and it really starts here in game four, um, in my opinion. Um, I think if you look at trends, or if you go back and we just look at trends specifically, and when I say Coach Bo led teams off of a loss, it's not like I'm just like kind of talking out of my ass. This, there's numbers that back this. Since last season in the playoffs, the Heat are 11 and 4 straight up and against a spread, also 10 and 5 to the under following a loss. That's it. That includes 6 and 2 straight up and against the spread this season. Um, also six and two to the under this season as well. I think in every single game this season, in this postseason, following a loss, they've limited their opponent under their team total as well. So it is a major focus for them following losses to key in on the defensive aspect of the game. And that's kind of why I look towards the under as well. I think I think um, one thing you mentioned, Matt, too, was that first quarter on the Miami side. They have to come out with a sense of urgency. Being at home as well is a, is a key component. Um, uh, I, I think maybe the Heat would probably be, I think their biggest, I think their best quarter to win would be that first quarter in my opinion, right? Cause they're going to, they're, they're going to come out real strong. Um, but I wanted to ask you from a prop perspective, right? We talked about, you, you mentioned Gabe Vincent bouncing back a little bit, um, on the, on the nugget side, we talked on Wednesday about MPJ, right? And uh, how we thought he was going to come out and they were going to attack with him, see how he does. And if he does, if he struggles, they would take him out early. And that's kind of what we saw. Do you think yeah. that that happens again here in, in game four that MPJ has a, another short leash? Um, and if that's the case, do we see uh, Christian Brown, right? Christian Brown come in and do the same things that he did in game three? Um, or uh it does it not really matter what MPJ does in this first quarter. We're going to see that same rotation in game three. Maybe we look at Christian Brown props uh, to the over because of that. Yeah, I'll be honest with Michael Porter Jr. Uh, this really isn't a surprise to me. You know, this is who he is. He does this in the regular season. He's an incredibly streaky shooter. He's an incredibly streaky player. But with that being said, I would be surprised if he did not go over his prop at least once in this series you know and he's one of those guys too with alternative lines he oftentimes has a lot of value after he's had numerous bad games in a row him having a 20 plus game or even a 25 plus game this is a very very streaky shooter he can make a lot of continuous shots in a row Um, but to your point ron i do think he will once again have a very short leash so it's a risky play because again if he comes out and he's ice cold he's gonna get yanked because christian brown is in a rhythm he's playing very good and it's not just on the offensive side of things it's also on the defensive side of things and Michael Porter Jr. does have very nice length 
He's good at rebounding the basketball. And in terms of guarding some guys, he's efficient, but he doesn't move his feet incredibly well. And Christian Brown does. Christian Brown is willing to get into your body to fight you a little bit. So I do think that he's earned probably 25 minutes. And if MPJ is playing bad, he's going to get near that 30 range, honestly. And a lot of that does have to do with the defense. Uh, me personally, I, as you guys know, I like my same game parlays. I like my mini same game parlays, stuff like that. I'll probably have some exposure to Michael Porter Jr. just to get some high alternative odds, essentially, um, because that value will be there. So for me, I do think he is in a spot to potentially bounce back but it is a risky play just because he's going to have that short leash he's very easily going to get yanked now from the Miami Heat side I think for the Miami Heat to keep this game close or to potentially win it it can't be just Jimmy and Bam one of those guys have to come along for the ride, whether you like Gabe Vincent, whether you like Max Strews, whether it's Kayla Martin, uh, Kyle Lowry. I actually do like Kyle Lowry assists. He's actually been pretty efficient in terms of assists throughout the series. Just one thing that I am looking at. But uh, from those kind of secondary players, one of those guys has to come along for the ride. And to Tony's point, they also have to shoot well from the outside. So for me, the two that I would be looking at, and they're going to be low numbers, will be Max Struess and Gabe Vincent. It can't just be Jimmy and Bam. But I do think it's going to be a lower scoring game. Once again, I think it's going to be very physical. And I think a lot of that's going to come from Miami early. So again, maybe uh, Miami Heat, a first, uh, first quarter spread, uh, first quarter money line, or even a Denver Nuggets, maybe first half under something along those lines i think the mm -hmm. heat are going to come out and play very hard mm -hmm. on the defensive end and i think the rest will let them play a little bit so i really do like all of those looks i like it i like that uh, i like that look right there um it makes a lot of sense for those who do the those sgps you know to to find where the value is and with mpj playing so poorly obviously like you said you know those numbers are going to be a lot lower than you would expect um you know mm -hmm. for someone of his caliber so if he does you know, bounce back. He's going to bounce back in a big way, in my opinion. Uh, you know, obviously, guys, we broke down the game. We, we looked at, a, you know, a few different angles from a prop perspective. Talked about the total. Talked about the side here a little bit. Um, let's go to the best bet section now. Let's go to the best bet section. I did have a question on, um, you know, the, the props of, of Jokic here. And uh, I know Tony is, is looking in, the, in that direction. So uh, let's go to you first, Tony. Um, what's your best bet for today's show? Also, uh, what do you got going over at Wager Talk? The Wager Talk, I have, uh, I have had big tickets on every finals game. Three big tickets, or at least three games, three big tickets, and three winners. In my, and, and I zigzagged. Really, I played the under in game one. Mm -hmm. I didn't like the adjustment in game two, so I went over. And I'll talk a little bit about that just briefly. And then last game, we, we talked about it on the show. We, all of us really liked the under. And the under was uh, – was a, a no sweat, uh, you know, skinny dip uh, with the pretty girl <laughs> next door. So I mean, it really was. It was just too easy, right? And um, the situation with uh, Matt, he talked about uh, Porter. The one thing about Malone is if you're not, listen, if he doesn't think you're working, he doesn't think you're all in, you're sitting. He's not mm. shy about it. Now, obviously, there's a couple of guys he doesn't do that with um, because they're his boss, and that's uh, Jokic and Murray. And that's just the way the NBA works, right? I mean, uh, LeBron runs the Lakers, or at least he did. And any any criticism and any any kind of uh, critiquing, he's a start with LeBron. It's just the way it is. He has a lot of influence on what happens with the team. Malone, very transparent. Uh, he he said, "Listen, I'm not down on I'm not down on Porter Jr. He's just not he's not he's cold. He's not shooting very well." And here's the deal. If you're not shooting well and you're not defending, you're not playing. And that's just it. So I've been big on Porter Jr. being able to hit some threes that Miami, um, you know, Miami's, you know, can't really, they have nobody to guard him. And he's still, he's had wide open looks, guys. He still can't hit the shot. He really can't. Mm -hmm. And for the most part, for the most part, I'm going to go aside of that. I'm going to go Jokic. And I talked about it here on the first of the show, and they have no answer. Miami has no None, zero answer for Jokic unless they do something different. Now, that's the, the, listen. That's the million dollar question. That's the wild card in this game. Four is Miami desperate? Are they desperate? Are they desperate? Do they feel like listen, we got to have this game, or are they the same Miami team we've seen through this playoffs where uh, it's one game at a time? Um, you know, every one man goes down, one man steps up. 
I, I think this. I think this is a smart guy. He's an old Hall of Famer coach. He's not there yet. He hasn't been voted in. He is a Hall of Famer coach. Hall of Fame. Un- first ballot, in my opinion. Um, he's got to be creative, guys. But no matter how creative he gets, Jokic is going to get his PAG, mm-hmm. uh, PAR, in points and rebounds alone. No matter what, I mean, 53, 53 and a half, 51 and a half. I've had, there's been numbers kind of jumping around on that one. He's going to get those, uh, the assists are icing. And if Miami is creative and they make him facilitate, then a lot of his rebounds will be subsidized by his assists, which would be mm-hmm. instead of 17, 20 uh, uh, rebounds, 17 assists. So give me over 53 and a half on Jokic <clears throat> points, assists, rebounds. It's a, it's a slam dunk, and I feel the same way about my 5%er that I have up there uh, uh, for tonight. I, I think that um, – I'm not going to give you a percentage. I'm not going to tell you what my, what my simulations would get put that at, but I'm telling you, I like this play, and you can have it for just $35 only at Wage Talk. I like it. I, one thing that I, that you talked about, and I, I just, while you were breaking it down, it made a lot of sense to me because – we talked about how the Heat have to focus on the defensive side of the ball and limiting the points in the paint, right? <clears throat> That's going to allow MPJ to have more open shots like he's had all season long. So, yeah. you know, if he gets hot early, he he might have those minutes. I really, I really do believe that. So, but like I like like what you guys both said, it's going to be a short leash, guys. So if he doesn't make yeah. those early shots, it's going to be a problem. Um, all right, let's go to Matt here. What's your best bet for today's show? Also, what do you got going on over at Sports Memo? Yeah, guys, I have two plays over at Sports Memo right now, and uh, one of them will be this best bet. And just wanted to comment on Tony's play because I love that once again. We talked about this since game one. Every single game, I am running Nikola Jokic triple double. You know, we're two and one right now. I'm going to keep rolling with it. And I feel like this game right here is another great spot because they have to do something. They have to throw doubles. They have to throw traps. They have to do something. So to your guys' point, I think MPJ will get a lot of open looks. Is he going to knock them down now? Is he ready? You know, I personally, like I said, I will have some exposure. Uh, It'll be like same game parlays with some crazy odds, something along those lines. But I do think there is a possibility that MPJ could finally come out and have a good game because of what Nikola Jokic is doing. I mean, he's shooting 59% from the field. You know, oh my God. But uh, that's not my best bet. Just wanted to go on a little tangent about Jokic there my best bet for today is actually going to be Gabe Vincent who we talked a lot about before and right now you know last game Gabe Vincent did not have a very good game he had seven points he shot two for ten from the field but he's been one of the most efficient players for the Miami Heat and has become a player that you can depend on for the Miami Heat as well. You know, last game, uh, like I talked about, Gabe Vincent got in some foul trouble, couldn't get in a rhythm in the first half, got two early fouls, had to sit down, came right back in, and then had that weird foul where he was kind of standing there and Aaron Gordon ran into him. Then he had to check right back out. So a lot of basketball is getting in a rhythm. Are you seeing some shots going down? You know, are you getting in the flow of the game? And Gabe Vincent was never really able to do that. Now in this spot, I really do like him to bounce back, have a solid outing here. You know, he's averaging 11 shots per game. He's shooting 41% from beyond the arc. And to both of your guys' points, for this Heat team to keep it close, for them to compete, they need to shoot well from beyond the arc. And this is a Denver Nuggets team that really hasn't been hedging around the screens or anything along those lines. So I do think Gabe Vincent is going to get some open looks. I also think someone like Jimmy Butler is going to be a lot more aggressive. Again, he got to the free throw line last game. I think he's going to continue to attack and do so. And when that happens, you know, the defense kind of comes around you in the paint. And then just maybe Gabe Vincent will be that guy on the outside, ready to spot up and knock some shots down. So for me, I really do like the look of Gabe Vincent. This is a line at 12 and a half points. And, you know, he's hit this in his uh, last three out of five games, playing very well once again. You know, last game was just one of those spots where, you know, you get in foul trouble sometimes and you have to sit. Again, like I said, it's a rhythm game. Just wasn't there. Now I think he bounces back here. He's been averaging uh, double-digit shots every single game. So tonight... Gabe Vincent over 12 and a half points. Mute Ron. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. Uh, yeah, I think uh, just to add on to what you were saying, Matt, um, I think out of all the guys, he has been the most important uh, role player throughout the whole postseason. 
So for someone to, to bounce back, I think I definitely agree that it would be him. Um, so th- I think that's a good look there, 12 and a half points. Also, one thing to mention too, I, I think we went from, I forgot what his points prop was in game two, but it went down uh, to like 11 or 12 in game three. And it, to me, I was like, man, it must be telling us his story. The reason why it's coming down is because it's going to be an under game two. He ended up going under. I was telling one of my buddies, he was like, yeah, I think uh, this game visit line is too low. <clears throat> I was like, man, I think defensively they're going to make some adjustments here. Um, and he ended up going under. So I think having it uh, come up another point, actually, after having a down game makes makes sense uh, to me that he goes over. Um, all right, so my turn here, uh, my best bet is going to be on the under, uh, something that we talked about during the show here. And some of the strong trends actually back this play here. Uh, you know, I, I touch on the SDQL stuff. If you guys follow Wager Talk and, and Ralph Michaels and all these guys, they they touch on the, the they use like SDQL, and that's something that I use here uh, as well in my in my capping process. And it's uh, one trend that I, I've looked at since 2002 in the NBA Finals. Game fours are 15, four and one to the under. Like I said earlier, I think the longer the series goes, especially in the finals, every position counts just a little bit more. And defenses show up uh, towards you know uh, every you know towards the end of these series um, because because of how important each possession is they they want to limit the amount of scoring on the opposing team. If you add that game game three went under and the total went down from game three uh, to game four and it did it's now down to I think it opened at two eleven I gave it out to my clients at two eleven it's now two ten and a half and I feel like it's still an opportunity to go down. The closer we get to tip off, so if you like it, I would say take it now. More, more, um, you know, would be better than later because it can it can continue to go down. I could actually see this closing at like a two hundred nine, two hundred nine and a half. But if you add that game three went under and the total went down, it's eight zero and one to the under. So not not a single game since two thousand two, not a single four game four has gone over in that specific situation. Um, and it goes to you know, it goes with the game plan as well, right? We expect Miami. To, to come out with a sense of urgency that they're, they're going to slow the pace down a little bit further. And also they have to limit the nuggets uh, in the post. They're going to key in on the defensive side of the ball here. And, uh, you know, just some of the trends that I mentioned earlier with how the heat tend to cover win and also keep games under that that's telling me that they're keeping their opponents uh, under their team total as well. Um, in those same situations. Um, you know, I, I think uh, one thing that we mentioned earlier about how important uh, defensively, they have to uh, uh, make those adjustments in the paint. The Nuggets have struggled offensively from three, so if we see them come out and and get up, get these open shots and struggle from three, it's definitely going to be one of those games where it, neither team might hit hit a hundred. You know, and so that's the way I'm going with this one. I like I like the fact that um, uh, some of the trends point to the under, some of the game plan and the game flow that I expect to happen here in Game Four point to the under. And I just don't think they brought the total down low enough. So I took the under here. 211, like I said, I gave that to my clients on, um, you know, right after the game, actually. And then, uh, and then you know, uh, I think I would play it down to 209. I think that would be the lowest I go if it happens to, to come down to that. Um, from a premium side here, I do have a actual 5% play. I have a play that I like even better than this full game under, and that's available over at Wager Talk. Um, I also have a couple of WNBA plays available today. Currently number one in WNBA profit over at Wager Talk. And uh, so they set up a deal for me for the rest of the WNBA season. Season-long package, it goes all the way through the WNBA finals for $179. I think it's like a, a the normal price is like $400 or something like that. So it's a big discount. So if you want a full game, a full season long package in the WNBA, it's $179. I just recommend that because the typically we see softer lines in the WNBA, um, especially right now. Like the other day, I had, I gave out a, a number uh, the night in the, the early morning. Two hours later, the point uh, the total steamed up four points within the next two hours. So that's how soft some of these lines are in the WNBA, uh, especially with you know MLB um, starting to be the more um, uh, important sport <laughs> that everyone's looking at because the NBA is going uh, going away pretty soon here. Um, so WNBA continues to have soft lines and, and having a package versus like the daily picks um, available, you get to you get to take advantage of us putting in the number at the current the, the play at the current number that we see, uh, especially in the morning or the night before. Um, with that said, guys, Matt and uh, and Tony, I appreciate you guys for coming in and, and doing the show here today for for game four. Our next show is game five uh, on Monday. 
actually. So no, no game this weekend in the NBA. We'll, we'll be back on Monday to discuss game five. Until then, guys, good luck with our reaction. Peace. Peace. And there will be there will.